Hello, this is Spellbinder. I'm going to show you something here that I made a connection with. Apparently, no one else made this connection, and so I'm going to do it just for uh, five minutes or so. It's not going to be very long. It's the Blitz Mystery Spear Alien Artifact or Doomsday Device, Ooh, April 21st. Okay, here we go. What it is, there's a this Bazir allegedly self patrol seamless metallic orb was discovered by members of the family of the Blitz in 1974 and rapidly became an object of fascination. Controversy and alarm for the scientists, military, and ufologists, and general public as the story of this mystery spear spread like wildfire through the international media. This is 1972. On May 26, 1974, Terry Matz Blit, a 21-year-old pre-med student, along with his mother and girlfriend and engineer father Antonio, inspected the damage caused by a brush fire that raged across an 88-acre swath of land. Well, what this comes down to, they found a sphere. This is not it. That's it. The mystery spear awakes. Now I'm just going to go through this real fast. I'm going to show you something that you may not have made a connection to, but I make connections. I see it all by my connections. Now this fallen sphere landed on our property, and the media frenzy begins. Mystery fear falls on our property in Jacksonville, Florida. And they're on an island where this all happened. A fire happened. They went out and inspect to see what caused the fire. And they found this silver 8-inch sphere that weighed as much as a bowling ball. Okay, that's side the point. Now this sphere, according to this, the kid that discovered it, was a music musician and put the sphere in the window and what happened here is he had people over and he decided to play his guitar alright he started stringing off notes and the spear started reacting to it and the spear hummed and stuff and, and actually levitated on several octaves of the guitar strings after he pulled several strings, the spear went and raised up. Okay, I want you to know this because what I'm getting ready to show you is going to blow you away five years later. 1994, right? Okay, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to do this right here. You've seen the entire article. And there's a sphere. A silver sphere. Think about that. Just keep that in your mind. A silver sphere. Okay. Is a silver sphere a doomsday device? Nah, 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 nah. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go through that. What the hell was it? Blah, blah, blah. And we go through all this. And what the writer did not connect that I connected was a film done in 1979 that was called Phantasm. Where there was these spheres, not quite that size in the first episode, but they got bigger on the other movies that came out up to four that they did come out the same size as a bowling ball size you know uh, six seven eight inch uh, sphere and uh, I don't know already I gave it away phantasm okay let's go to the uh, phantasm movie and I haven't had a chance to go through this but let's just go through this while you're watching it and see parts of this movie where he goes through and finally, finally, 
oops went too far I'm gonna play just a hair of this this is under freedom of information this is under uh, non rights I'll, I'll actually even put that down if I have to in the video but he comes across a sphere that floats on its own but it has diabolical consequences if he's not careful and this is what I believe how this movie was created this is how Phantasm was created I absolutely believe that the guy camera uh, Coral Raleigh I think is the name of it I can go to the article in Let's go up here. Well, not that. It was more of my uh, comments. Okay, this is my comments under Jason Wise. This sounds a lot like Phantasm, a 1979 low-budget cut classic horror film directed and written and photographed and co-produced and edited by Don Ka. Serrera. It too involved levitating flying spheres, a magician, and tuning forks. Was the movie Phantasm based on the story? It might have been. Who really knows? And that's why I put up here on this story because I want to point out that this story may have created this movie. And this movie is not that bad. I actually enjoyed the uh, Phantasm series. And I'm just thinking that this man, Don Corsarelli, actually read the article about the sphere and about his levitating when this guy played the guitar where he had friends over and made it so. Meanwhile, back to the video. And it's only a, uh, going to be a, like I said, a Freedom Information Act or a Freedom of uh, Publishing this on this. Let me see if I can uh, find the right place. Okay, here we go. Enjoy. Watch Phantasm. It does line up with the story in 1974 to this movie in 1979. And it was a very good imagination of the uh, writer of this that he came up with this. And this ideal, I think it's cool <laughs> that he came up with this. There it is. There was a sphere. And he just ducked it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably not the sphere's real purpose, but it was just the idea that this movie was based on that sphere's theory and made a horror movie out of it. Low budget at that. That is so cool. And I'm just wanting to point it out. That sphere, like they said in the article, should have been taken to uh, maybe a crop out in the field and see if it did the same thing as the crop circles and other things. I agree with that. I agree that it should have been done or taken to the pyramids or somewhere else. This sphere that they talk about had certain properties that was not nothing that a satellite was made out of. I mean, it levitated on its own. They don't normally and in the sphere somewhere still exists I don't know where the story doesn't really carry it on to that but this is where in phantasm he meets the tall man and then this is how the entire series takes off but besides that <laughs> I'm not gonna go any for 
because of uh, rights of uh, the filmmakers and everything. But I wanted to point this out as a relationship to what was going on when they had this fear that they talked about. I mean, they talk about this one. That doesn't look nothing like the sphere they had. It looked more like the sphere that was in this movie. But that's the side the point. That's all I really wanted to tell you. I mean, uh, I thought it was interesting just to bring this up to this article. And I'll have a link to it. Because I believe in uh, paranormal activities and stuff. And... If there's extraterrestrials and other things, so be it, which I know there are, but but there's also extra dimensions and extra dimensional creatures. And what they were saying is our thing was just like in the movie where they had the, another world through a pitchfork, like a uh, vibrator, uh, you know, a pitchfork. You hit it and it goes ding. Well, in the movie, the guy hits it. I don't want to spoil everything, but you got to watch Phantasm to relate to this. I really think this is basically related to this story. Until next time, this is Spellbinder just saying, just heads up, this is something that happened in 1974. They found this sphere, and it had weird properties, and it did weird things like levitate on musical notes. And then this movie comes out in 79 based on the same ideals. Good day.